Hey guys, how's it going? Corey and Joey here, bringing you another first look here from the Tackle Warehouse Studios. And I uh, got some more new cool product coming out for this summer. And what do we got coming up today, Joey? You know, Corey, it's like, it's like living in a dream. I have introduced <laughs> classic champions time and time again from this desk. I get to do it again today. Classic champion Cliff Pace. Cliff, thank you for joining us today. How you doing? Yeah, man, you bet. How are y'all? Good. How you doing? Right. Yeah. Good. So Cliff, we've got Cliff today to to go through some baits from two different brands. The first up is some soft plastics, right? Corey? Yes, sir. We got some soft plastics from V and M. It's the V and M RC Craw. Cliff, can you tell us a little bit about the Craw? So the RC Craw is kind of a. It's what I kind of list. It's like a combination soft plastic, and the reason I say that is because you can do a lot of things with it. Um, you know, soft plastics to me, versatility in soft plastics is important. The, the more I can do with one that I have in my boat, the less I have to have in my boat. Uh, the RC crawl is really just a compact, um, when you, at first glance, it's just a flipping style bait and it's great for that. Um, if you look at it, it's got two paddle tail feet on the back that create a lot of disturbance in the water. It's got a lot of swim, so it's got a lot of action. Um, but it's also got two rows along each side of like a perforated vent running all the way the length of the bait on each side. And what that does from a flipping standpoint, it's a, you know, if you want to put scent, a lot of guys really like to put scent on their bait. You can press the scent down to those holes and it stays there really well, especially if it's like a paste type scent. Um, the other aspect of it is those holes, you know, they catch air. So when you flip this bait in the water, once somebody hits the bottom, you get those you know, little nipple appearing, little small micro sized air bubbles that'll come up off of the bait, which sometimes can be a real key. Um, but the bait can be the bait can be altered and done a lot of other things with. But after it's out of the package, I've had a lot of success with it. I'm flipping it just straight out of the package, just make sure the tails are separated. It's great on a on a you know a wobble head style uh, on the bottom. Uh, it's been another really good use for it that I've that I've used. And you know beyond that. You can turn this thing into a trailer really, really easy. You just take your scissors and come up the sides of it right where that perforation is I was talking about, and that just falls right off real, real easy. And now you have more of a streamlined profile like this that's absolutely perfect to put on the back of a bladed jig or a swim jig or a football head jig. Um, and even when I want a smaller profile or a faster rate of fall or to go in and out of thicker cover, like from a punching standpoint, uh, like in, you know, high set match, something that's real thick, I'll even trim it down like this for flipping just because it makes it more streamlined. So, you know, it's kind of a unique bait in the fact that you can take this one bait and do multiple things with it. It's not a, it's not a one-size-fits-all bait. It gives you some options to customize it. And, and we made it like that for, for that reason, just so, you know, I can put this bait in my boat, have it for flipping, have it for a jig trailer, have it for a bladed jig trailer. Pretty much any anything that I want, a soft plastic that's got a paddle style action, I can pretty much make the RC crawl work for any of those situations. Cliff, you know, when, when I first looked at this thing, the first thing I thought was punch yeah. punch bait. The second thing I thought was wobble head. Uh, I didn't think about the vibrating jig, jig application. Yeah. Uh, I think that could be a really interesting application mm -hmm. from there. And then, like you said, so many ways to alter this bait, cutting the bait, removing appendages, uh, modifying it. One thing though, getting back to, to flipping and punching, Corey, this thing's going to hold a mega size flipping hook. Oh yeah, for uh, sure. Plenty of meat there to hold a great big flipping hook. That's going to keep those fish pinned. Uh, this is a really exciting little bait. Yeah. And, and speaking simply to the hook, I noticed on the back of the bait, or the bottom of the bait, there is a little spot there. It looks like for the hook to come out, I'm guessing that's to kind of keep the hook in place, but also position it and help. Can you explain just a little bit the, why you guys have that little indent here on the bottom of the bait? Yeah, this little notch right here, it's only on one side, and you're right. You need to consider that to be the bottom side of the bait. When you're Texas rigging this bait, especially with your straight shank flipping hooks, um, you know, all of our straight shank flipping hooks we're using now pretty much have some form of keeper on it, be it a piece of shrink tubing or something that's been injected around the hook. Some of them even have, you know, like a big strand of fluorocarbon wood tied in place. And when you pull that hook through, if you'll – if you'll come out of the bait right there where your hook point when you rig it, when you flip that hook over and push it back, it gives that piece that's on the hook something to 
not necessarily make it hold the bait on the hook better, but to me what it does is it conceals it. So you don't have to worry about when it's going in and out of that thick cover, whatever kind of hook barb or hook keeper you have, it's not going to hang on any kind of vegetation or, or slime or grass. So it does help hold it in place a little bit, not a tremendous amount better than without it, but the main thing is, is it prevents it from getting dirty. It prevents your bait from picking up extra grass and extra garbage when you're fishing with it. You know what? I mean, that's such an interesting thought. We, we mm-hmm. for, I, I'm always talking to people about about efficiency when you're flipping and punching and making sure Definitely. that your your next presentation isn't held back from having to stop, yeah, yeah. pick stringy grass off off your bait. So, uh, just a really interesting, almost a little uh, weed guard for your hook yeah, keeper. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, ton of thought put into this bait. Uh, I, I'm really excited about getting this into my boat for, for a few different applications, Corey. Yeah, I, I'm excited just as well to check this thing out and get it later on here. If you guys want to check it out, it should be available very soon here. They're on their way to us. Just got to get them in and get them pictured. So hopefully by the time you see this video, they'll be up. If not, they'll be up very shortly. And make sure to pick yourself up a V&M RC Craw designed by the man, Cliff Pace. Wait. You know, Corey, before we move on, I did have one question. Yes, Something sir. we were talking about uh, yesterday when yes. we were discussing this bait. Cliff, what is the RC in RC oh, yeah. Craw? Or is that a secret that you can't tell us? RC, RC stands for, so a good friend of mine in Tennessee, name is Rick Campbell. And Rick and I worked together to design this bait for like a year. And when we got it all done, and all little tweaks done, and everything with it, uh, he had put so much time into it. It was kind of, we were talking about it. You know, amongst ourselves as a business with me and Kevin and all that way, it kind of just started getting referred to as Rick Bait. You know, when are we coming on Rick's Bait? When is the mold out on Rick's Bait? Did the new modification get done on Rick's Bait? So when we finally got it done, I said, what are we going to call it? Well, you know, we just call it Rick's Bait. That's what we've been calling it forever. So we named it the RC Crawl, kind of just to, to, to say thanks and show the gratitude and all the time and effort that he put into helping me get this thing built. Well, thanks for being M and thanks for from me for making this bait, Rick, wherever you are. Uh, anyway, that's that's the VNM new RC Craw. And uh, and Corey, we're gonna be shifting gears here with Cliff. What's so, that, Cliff, sorry, go ahead. Cliff, what was that? One more thing on the RC Craw. Yes, sir. Sure. And this is something that, this is something that a lot of guys are gonna overlook about this bait. If you look at how much mass this bait has and how, and how thick it is, and everything and you're right we didn't make it like that so it'll hold a big hook one application for this bait the guys are going to sleep on and it's a, it's probably one of my favorite ways to use it is take your skirt off your buzz bait and put this on your buzz bait this bait with the side of pinnacles and the width and the paddle tails it is incredible on a skirtless buzz bait especially skipping under docks and skipping under overhang things of that nature um it's going to replace some of your frog uses for your buzz bait. I can tell you that, or will for me for sure. Definitely, yeah. definitely going to be an interesting buzz bait trailer. And, and I, I like too that it's not the mass is concentrated in a mm-hmm. short package, so you're not having a lot of a lot of uh, trailer hanging out beyond your hook or your trailer hook there. Uh, you know, if they go to eat this, they're they're going to get the hook. They keep them targeted, yeah, for sure. Right. Switching gears from soft baits here. Uh, we're we're gonna start talking about some crankbaits, some hard baits. Yeah. Corey's favorite. <laughs> so uh, hey hey Cliff, we're here to talk uh, now about uh, some new black label crankbaits. The the headhunter is the first one up. Can you tell us a little bit about the headhunter? Yeah, so you know the headhunter is um, it's a bigger profile square bill crankbait. It's a it's a hundred percent balsa, handmade by me. Um, I mean, we could go through the whole spiel, but it's the same process and the same everything that, that all my black labels are constructed with. The same hardware, you know, must add TG76 hooks. But let's talk about the bait itself. You know, Headhunter is a bigger profile than, say, what my black label wreck is. Now, we released a wreck about a year and a half ago. Um, the wreck was kind of a variation of the WEC1 style bait that, you know, Ed Chambers had made, many other people had made versions of it, and it 
you know, obviously when Ed passed away, those bikes quit being produced. And I had a lot of guys, because of my connection to the boss world, asked me to make my version of that. So I did, and now I was asking me, you know, for a bigger one. You know, um, this is a this is a two and a half inch version, which is going to be very similar to Ed. He calls um, so you know, the headhunter to me is perfect for a couple of different things. Like you talk about why I would choose a headhunter over a wreck. Let's say. For me, you know, the bigger profile, that's kind of a no-brainer. Anytime you want to catch a bigger fish or you're trying to target a bigger fish or you're around bigger bait fish, then the bigger profile can be a bonus. You know, that can be certain times of the year. It can be certain bodies of water, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the other thing about the headhunter that I, I personally like a lot, and a lot of people probably don't think about this, but to me the added weight of the headhunter can be a real bonus. And the reason I say that is, you know, when you're fishing a square bill, especially a bulky square bill, you know, the whole the whole point of this bait, what makes this bait, you know, what makes the balsa bait what it is, is the way it comes through wood, super buoyant. And that being said, every cast I make with this bait, I really want it to hit something, if there's something there to hit. And the the bigger size and the added weight, you know, this is a three eighths, I mean a wreck is a three eighths, this bait's a half. Um, that extra weight actually makes it a lot easier for me to make very, very precise casts around cover. Uh, another thing is I can cast this bait much farther. So a lot of times I'll choose this bait if I'm cranking, like just say a gravel bank or things like that, a little more casting distance. A lot of times I'll choose this bait over a wreck. Um, but those are some of the times and situations where I would choose the headhunter over the wreck. Um, not really it's a profile thing. The baits are pretty similar to them. You know, they got the swing polycarbonate lip. Line tie comes through the bill. Right? It's all fully encased and sealed. You know, I mean, I take a lot of pride in making these baits. I think I've got them made as good as, as, good as I know how and as good as, as, good as they can be. Um, but it's just a, it's a bigger bait. It's a bigger body. It's more weight. It doesn't really have more vibration. But it's overall just a bigger profile and an easier bait to cast into hard, you know, little nooks and crannies. Very cool. I mean, you said you have a lot of pride in this bait, and it shows. I mean, everything, the design, the, the, every, the detail is thought out. It's a very well-designed bait, you know, and it's just, just and it's, it's also really awesome paint jobs on all these baits. You know, we, all of us are really excited about some of the new colors, the new stuff coming out. And it's overall really cool bait. And uh, it just, it's nice to be able to I get these balsa baits at a, uh, readily accessible now. Absolutely. No, it is, uh, uh, it, as Cliff was, was alluding to, this, this is a substantial bait. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, just holding it in my hand, you're going to be able to huck this thing quite a while. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Solid tackle, uh, you know, a he little heavier line than you might be able to throw a, a, fin a slightly smaller crankbait on. Um, and you're really going to be able to cover some water with mm -hmm. this thing. Um, so that's the larger size. It's a headhunter. It's, uh, it, I think, available soon, right, Corey? Uh, this one should be available for pre-order, uh, and, and it will be available soon, but uh, it should be available for pre-order right now. And probably shortly after the video is up, I'm guessing it actually will be in stock. I could look it up here just to make sure. Sorry, guys, you should have been prepared for this one. Uh, but the headhunter is... Yeah, I, I totally Corey's the ball. losing it. Corey's <laughs> losing it. Up next, we'll we'll get back to the availability on that one. Yeah. Up next, though, uh, we have we have the new size of the wreck, right, Corey? Yes, we got a new smaller size. Uh, I guess the wreck junior. Yeah, so the wreck junior is it, it's exactly that. It's a smaller version of you know the, the wreck barbell that you know we came out with a couple years back. It's been so popular. And if you, if you look, I'm holding them side by side right now. This is a wreck, and this is the new wreck junior. Um, the wreck junior is built the same way as the wreck. It's got polycarbonate lip in it. It's got the line tie through the lip. It's got the same thing. It's still hardware. You know, it's finished the same way. All my black labels are finished. But it's just a smaller, more bite size profile. And I've had a lot of people reach out to me on social media and things of that nature asking about a smaller version square bill crankbait that will really come through wood cover you know, really well. That's what Malta gets excelled at. 
I think that you know, our bodies of water, when they get so much fishing fishing now, just a lot of times where you just need a smaller bait um, to, to get bit, or to get bit on a consistent basis. And not only that, it can, it can just be the difference of the day. If you have a, you know, if you have a good thinking deal going on, and then all of a sudden you get a big social system that comes in and keeps you a little bit funny, you know, you can sometimes switch to a smaller bait and, and keep it going and keep it alive. But that's pretty much what the Red Junior is in a nutshell. It just, it's just simply that. It's a smaller, scale-blown version of the wreck, perfect for all the same types of cover and same types of situations where you use the wreck, just if you want one, and also a little bit more of the bite you know, offering to the fish. Yeah, with this smaller bait, is there, do you change up the tackle and the gear you use when you're throwing? Because it is a little bit lighter. You know, it doesn't probably cast as well, I'm assuming. So is, is there uh, a different gear you would throw it on normally, or how, how do you go about that? You know, typically when I fish the wreck, I only use 15 or 20 pound test fluorocarbon, depending on the cover and the depth. Uh, with the wreck junior, I would say you know maybe use 15, and then you might want to maybe back off to 12 if you're in a if you're in a real real light cover environment where there's really not a lot of cover in the water. And I think that's going to be a situation where this bait gets used a lot. You know, where I'm looking forward to using this bait the most is you know where I live here in the south. I'm fishing gets extremely difficult in the fall. Of the year, that early fall, that late summer, early fall, those fish, um, their oxygen levels get real low, and those fish get up there real shallow, and they're in the back of creeks, and you, know, you see that one piece of wood over in the corner, and you know that there's a juice over there, but everybody else knows that as well. The fish are getting a lot of pressure, and a little downsized bait like this, so I'll come through that shallow cover in the fall, I think is going to be really, really exciting. Cliff. You referred to this as bite size. My first thought was, this is a bite getter. Yeah, like, yeah. When you need a bite, this crankbait's going to get you a bite in those tough conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, just a really cute little guy. Uh, still not excluding yourself from, from throwing it on some substantial tackle and making sure that when you do get the bite in that laydown, you're able to get the fish out. Uh, I'm really excited about this little guy. Uh, I think this is going to be a great addition to the Black Label lineup. Go ahead, Cliff. I've been, fishing this bait since, I've been fishing this bait since last winter in the prototype phases and all through this season. And this bait, you can fish it on 15, you know, no problem. It'll carry 15 pounds of full carbon with ease. Now, Cliff. And if you just really need you probably could put it on 20. For sure, for sure. Uh, you know, as long as you have the right rod, soft enough tip, you're going to be able to load that thing up even on heavy line. Cliff, uh, with this more round-bodied style, you talked a lot about hot water fishing, summertime, uh, through the fall, uh, really tough fishing. Is, is this something uh, that is primarily a warm water crankbait for you, or is this something that you might pick up in the winter or early spring as well? You know, there's times in the winter where a round body boat won't be well, um, but you're typically, you know, if you just look at the general rule of thumb, Round body boats normally work extremely well in the water month of the year when it comes to balsa. And in the colder month of the year, you see your flat sided bait really shine. Um, but there is some situations with where I will use a round body bait in the wintertime. One of the main ones for me is, you know, if you get a real warm rain in the wintertime and you get a lot of warm runoff running into a lake, especially a highland reservoir, those fish will shoot up out of that piece of water and run to that warmer runoff. And they only last for a day or two or possibly three before, you know, the runoff stops and the cold water of the main lake kind of pushes its way back in. But when you have that warm, dirty runoff and you have some color in the water and you need a bait that has a little bit of vibration because of the color in the water, uh, yeah, absolutely, this bait will, will work extremely well in the colder month of the year. But primarily when you're fishing bodies of water in the wintertime where you have not a tremendous amount of visibility. And, you know, for me, all I do is just slow my presentation way down to concentrate for the water being colder and the fish being more lethargic. The round body is a bait and a flat body bait. They'll both work all throughout the year, just depending on what conditions you have and what you're trying to Really interesting. Uh, Cliff's talking about <laughs> the wintertime runoff. Uh, <laughs> That's something that, that, that gets me excited. Yeah, I mean, sure. that is just such a fun bite when you're, when you're getting sick of shaking a worm or dragging a jig and, and you, get, you do get that warm rain mm -hmm. and you're able to go and throw a crankbait or a spinnerbait. What's up, rain? 
Yeah, yeah, we don't get rain out here. But uh, <laughs> when you're able to go throw a reaction bait uh, like the little Rec mm -hmm. Junior in that in that runoff in the middle of winter and, and get some reaction bait fish, yeah. I mean that's just such a fun bite. Um, so de I'll, that's definitely one I'll be I'll keep in keep in the back pocket for that as well as a good summertime little bite-sized bite getter, Corey. Yeah, like I said, summertime, fall, you can mention those in fall. And if you guys want to go ahead and pre-order this bait, it should be to you guys ready in time for fall fishing, along with, like when I fumbled, uh, the larger headhunter size as well. And again, uh, that, that V and M RC crawl will be available very soon as well. So, uh, Cliff, I really want to thank you for joining us today. Unless you got something else you guys want to give us some insight on, uh, we're going to head out of here and, and get on to the next one. My pleasure, guys. Anytime. You right, Cliff, you take it easy. Guys, thanks for tuning in for the, net, the latest edition of the Tackle Rally's First Look. We bring you the first look at all the new products coming out this summer. Make sure to tune in for more of all the new stuff coming out we got going on. I'm Joey. He's Marble Mouth. We'll see you next time. Can we do that again? What? Should I do it again? No. Okay. We're good. <laughs> We're going. Marble Mouth and... <laughs>